their words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe it. They did not believe it. I wonder, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, how many people here actually believe it? It's a hard tale to swallow. And I know this isn't what you expected to show up to Easter morning celebration and to hear the pastor say, Easter is hard to believe. But as a pastor, I'm standing before you telling you that Easter is hard to believe. And it's okay for you to admit that, that Easter is hard to believe. It's hard to believe that God came down from his throne on high, took on our form and our lot, lived as one of us, grew up as a little baby when he didn't have a car seat or a pacifier or bottles, you know, and then suffered through life and then was wrongly accused, put on trial, beaten almost to death, hung on a cross and died, and then three days later... Walked out of the tomb. There's no proof. I cannot give you the five reasons, the ten reasons, the two reasons, the three reasons why you need to believe this. I can't tell you the reasons behind what it is that make this story believable. Because if we look at the story, actually, and this is one of the few stories that's in all four Gospels, right? This morning we read Luke. But it's in all four of the Gospels. But if you read all four, there's there's your homework for the day. Everybody go home, get out your Bible, read all four versions of the resurrection story side by side and become completely perplexed and confused at the number of details that are in each story that aren't in the other ones. For instance, in Luke, it says that the stone was rolled away. There's no other mention of a stone in the Gospel of Luke. It doesn't say that they put a stone in front of the tomb when he's laid to rest. The stone was just rolled away. And why was the stone rolled away? Was the stone rolled away so that Jesus could come out? Or so that the women could go in? But the women were there. And the angel said to them, Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? Well, because that's where we expected him to be. We didn't really expect him to not be here, right? Because in Luke's gospel, unlike John's, they weren't able to prepare the body. The body was taken off of the cross. It wasn't prepared. It was just wrapped in a linen cloth. So they came back that Sunday morning, the day after the Sabbath, because they're not allowed to work on the Sabbath, right? And the Sabbath is not Sunday. It is Saturday. So they came back on Sunday morning with all of their spices ready to do what they were supposed to do as a family would for the di- for the dead member of their family. To prepare the body, to wrap it in, in ointments and spices, and to, to wrap it up to keep it preserved. They brought back the spices. They came back to the tomb where they expected to find him dead. They were with him for three years. They heard him say over and over again, That this was going to happen. Yet they still didn't get it. And then when they heard this and they finally figured it out, they had their epiphany. Right? Epiphany means they had a eureka moment and they understood what Jesus had said. Right? It says that the men said to this, remember what he had said. And they remembered what he said. So they went back and told the disciples. And the disciples heard it as an idle tale. This is another one of those times that the word is used once in all of the Greek New Testament. It's the only time that the word idle tale is used. And idle tale is a very nice translation of the word. A very nice translation of the word. Because women told tales. And they told lies. And you couldn't trust them. I'm not saying that now. I'm saying that that's the way it was in Jesus' day. Women, don't get ready your stones, don't get your tomatoes ready. I'm not saying that about you now. I'm saying that that's the way it was in Jesus' day, right? Women were worse than shepherds. And shepherds couldn't be witnesses in court. Because shepherds told lies and stole things. Which is another interesting concept when you take that, that we see Jesus as our shepherd. 
But women told them an idle tale and the disciples didn't believe it. Well, if they didn't believe it, why did Peter get up and go to the tomb? Peter got up and he went to the tomb and he looked inside the tomb and he saw the, the, the cloths that were wrapped around him and they, he saw the head linen off in another spot and he was amazed and he went home and amazed at everything that had happened. Right? Peter, the rock of our church, the, the person who the current popes are based off of, right? Peter is the succession of the popes if you're a Catholic, right? We are all Catholic. Part of the universal church, right? We're all Christians. We're all Catholic. Small C, not big C um, here. But the Roman Catholic Pope is the, is the succession of Peter. And Peter didn't really get it. He seems to have gotten it more than the other, than the other ten here in our gospel this morning. Because he got up after the women's story. Because they were moved and he saw that they believed what they had, what they had not seen. Right? They haven't seen Jesus yet. But it's hard for us to buy this story because all of the Gospels are different. Mark has the women leaving the tomb and telling nothing to anyone. Luke has them going and telling the disciples and the disciples saying, I just don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm standing before you this morning telling you, it's okay if you don't get it. Because there's sometimes that none of us get it. But that's where faith has to come in. And that's where Paul talks to, to the Corinthians. Right? The Corinthians didn't believe in the bodily re- resurrection. Why? There's several reasons we could, we could state. There's none that are very clear. But the Corinthians did not believe that Jesus rose from the dead in bodily form. And Paul tells them that if we only hoped in Christ when he was here, then we are most to be pitied. Because we can't hope in someone who's dead. Our hope has to be in somebody who's alive. And the interesting thing about this Corinthians reading is that uh, this says right here in this little snippet, it's like what? Five, seven verses. It says that not only when God rose Jesus from the dead that morning, did God change Jesus' life, but he completely rearranged all of the cosmos. He completely redeemed all of creation and brought everything back into the existence that it needed to be in. And I'm going to tell you this morning on the most glorious morning of all, the morning that we proclaim that Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Very good. Okay. I was hoping you would catch on. So it's good. This morning of all mornings, when we proclaim that Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That sometimes we don't get it. And that's okay. Because we have to have that moment where we see and understand who the Savior is for us. Because in every gospel rendition, Jesus has to make himself be made known to the disciples. In John, he has to call Mary by name before she realizes who he is. In Luke, we get it just after this, when the two disciples are walking down the road to Emmaus. And he appears to them, and he he opens the scriptures to them. And when he sits down with them for dinner, he breaks the bread. And when he breaks the bread, they realize, this is Jesus. The disciples didn't get it. And they got to see Jesus. And they got to hear Jesus. And they got to touch Jesus. And they got to be with him and and hear everything that he had to tell them. And if we don't get it sometimes, I think that's okay. Ruthie and I were talking about it before service. They got to see it all. And they didn't get it. We're living on secondhand accounts here. And if you don't get it, that's okay. The one thing I can tell you for certain... I can't give you the reasons to believe that the resurrection happened. I can cite many things why you should believe that the resurrection happened. But it's all in your own encounter with Jesus. But I can stand before you and say beyond the shadow of a doubt that I believe, even in those moments when I can't comprehend it or understand it, that Jesus Christ came to this earth, took on our form and our lot, was was put on trial for reasons that he didn't do anything for to be put on trial, 
was crucified for each and every one of us, died a horrible, painful death so that we wouldn't have to suffer for that, wound up in a tomb, a tomb that couldn't hold him. The rock was moved for the women, not for him. He didn't need them to move the rock for him to come out. And he rose again. He appeared to the disciples. He ascended into heaven and now we wait for him to come back. And can I prove it to you? No. But I believe it. Even when I can't explain it. Because that is my hope. That is the hope of this day. That in that moment when Jesus rose from the dead, that God reclaimed all of the cosmos, each and every one of us, before he, we were even, even, even ever here. God reclaimed you and named you, called you as his own, and redeemed you as part of the cosmos that was coming. And because of that, I have hope. And I hope because of that, you can have hope. Knowing that he did all of this for you, even if that person sitting next to you wasn't there, he did it all for you. Because he loves each and every one of us that much. So on this day, I want you to go into the world and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And that even though we can't explain it, we can still always believe it.